Okay, ladies and germs, Connor here from C Dubs Media, back with another video. And today we're doing a comparison between the Galaxy S22 and the Pixel 6 Pro. Which one is going to wipe the floor with the other one? Stick around, let's go find out. Alright, so both of these bought with my money. No one sponsored this video, you just get my opinion on which phone is better. Now, the reason I'm comparing these phones is because they're the same price point and they're both supposed to be flagship devices. Mm, maybe, maybe not. I can tell you which one is my daily driver when I get to the end. But we're going to go through the specs and see which one really kills it in the specs and which one really kills it in day-to-day -day use. And let's get the obvious things out of the way. The size. We have 210 grams versus 189 grams. That's a bit of a difference. We have 6.7 inches versus 6.1. That's a little bit of a difference. So they're definitely made for this certain type of user in terms of the size. I originally went for the Galaxy S22 because it was so small and dainty and I'm pretty active. I hate carrying a big phone, doing the old two-handed text messaging, all that sort of stuff. I didn't want to do that anymore, so I went with the Galaxy S22. It is definitely a very manageable device. The size is perfect, in my opinion. Look at that. That's one-handed, no dramas. I can text with that one-handed while I'm walking. Pixel 6 Pro, I need two hands most of the time to use it efficiently and not worry about dropping it. And that's with no case on. Like, once you whack a case on this, it's getting big. It's getting big and bulky and it takes up a lot of space in your pockets. So there's the two obvious differences. Now, on the back, Victus Glass, Victus Glass Plus. So the S22 has a little bit better display in terms of the glass and the protection. But for the display itself, you're talking a dynamic AMOLED versus an LTPO AMOLED HDR10 Plus on both of these. But pixels per inch, 512, 425. You're definitely getting a better experience on the Pixel 6 Pro when it comes to viewing and experiencing a really nice display. Both 120 hertz refresh rate, so you're going to get some good experiences there with gaming. Everything's going to flow very smoothly. I'm digging both for displays. And let's, you know, if we're going to give points out here, I think for the build and design, for me, the S22 takes the cake. It's just more manageable. The display isn't as good, but it's good enough for a small device. And look, with a device this small, it's not my primary device for watching content. Whereas with the Pixel 6 Pro, it could definitely be my primary device for watching content because it's just bigger and better. But... I definitely like the design and build of the S22. For me, this one takes the cake. You have speakers at the bottom on both of them. You have the power button on the right-hand side and the volume buttons on the right-hand side as well. They're just on the S22. The power button is at the bottom and on the Pixel 6 Pro, the power button is at the top. Now we're gonna to get to some interesting specs. We're gonna talk about the hardware. So Google pushing out its Tensor chip which is by all accounts supposed to be more secure, more better designed for Google software. It's just supposed to be the chip for Google. And I'd have to say it's a pretty good experience. Very smooth, very intuitive. Yes, there's been a lot of issues with the bugs in the software, but they can all be ironed out because it is software related. I actually didn't experience a lot of those bugs. A lot of people I know did. Some people couldn't wait to get rid of their Pixel 6 Pro, but some people, like me, had hardly any issues with it whatsoever. And my only complaint about the software, that I was left in the cold waiting for the March security update, this is back in March, when the rest of the world was already getting it. And I was thinking, come on, just roll it out to everyone, for crying out loud. But I haven't had any software problems with the Pixel 6 Pro, none that would make me think, Mmm, this is not good, I need to get rid of this. So we have the Tensor chip. Now with the S22, we have the Exynos chip and we have the Snapdragon 8450. 
for the rest of the world and the Exynos is just in Europe. So I have the Snapdragon, which is a four nanometer chip and the Tensor is five nanometer. So they're very close in terms of performance, but something's missing here. And we definitely only get eight gigabytes of RAM on the S22, which probably shouldn't make too much of a difference. We get 12 gigabytes of RAM on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. I'm telling you, the software on the Galaxy S22 is garbage. It is laggy, it doesn't perform well, it sticks. Like just opening the camera and then flipping from the front to the back camera just creates a, a tremendous lag. It's horrible, it's horrible. Like I could not stand it. And I tried and I tried and I tried. And then the S22, they were like, okay, we're gonna release some software that's gonna fix this because they were talking about throttling is getting in the way of the performance and blah, blah, blah. Well, I can tell you, with that software update, Galaxy S22 did not perform any better at all. I have not had anywhere near that sort of lag, throttling, all that experience is not there with the Pixel 6 Pro. I have a clean, fluid experience, 120 hertz refresh rate, buttery smooth Android software. Look, cat's out of the bag. I went back to the Pixel 6 Pro. I just couldn't stand working with the Galaxy S22 anymore. And the minute I did, I was relieved that I did. Like opening up that Pixel 6 Pro and scrolling through it, going through the apps, going through the Google feed, scrolling on any app, gaming. It was all a very smooth experience, very solid, problem-free experience for me. I just didn't have the problems that I was having with the S22. But I did like, and always have liked, having Samsung set up as like a, an ecosystem. So you have the Galaxy Watch, you have the Galaxy Buds 2, you have the Galaxy Phone, you have all this set up to be running really, really well. I do appreciate that, but it was just so bad. This experience was so bad. I was so let down. I wasted 1,250 bucks on this thing. Okay. Talking about the cameras, now there's a lot of megapixels going on here, so just bear with me. They both have a 50 megapixel primary sensor used for just taking your standard zoom shots. Your selfies, street photography, flower photography, all that sort of thing, 50 megapixels. Then the Google Pixel 6 Pro has a 48 megapixel telephoto zoom, which does a pretty good job. Then on the S22, we have a 10 megapixel telephoto zoom. On the Pixel 6 Pro, we then have a 12 megapixel ultra wide and again on the galaxy s22 we also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide it's pretty close here it's not as bad as the software and performance situation the cameras are pretty relative but the pixel 6 pro definitely has the edge when it comes to photography it takes a better photo has better dynamic range has more true to life colors has a lot of features in there for editing your photos as well. I really enjoy that pixel experience when it comes to photography. When it comes to recording video, it's a different story. The Galaxy S22 has a lot more options for video. I'm talking 4K, 8K, 4K 60, 4K 50 frames per second. Whereas with the Google Pixel 6 Pro, you have, I think it's 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second in 4K and 1080p. So you really don't have a lot of options with video on the Pixel 6 Pro. And I have definitely experienced the Pixel 6 Pro overheating in hot conditions. And that was actually what forced me to go, maybe I'll get the S22. Now also for slow-mo on the Galaxy S22, you do get 720p up to 930, 940 frames per second, something like that. And then on the Pixel 6 Pro, you get 240 frames per second in 1080p. So all around better video functionality on the S22. If you can handle the lag and you don't mind bashing your head against the brick wall when it comes to software, but you love taking video, then maybe the S22 is for you, but you might regret it. Front facing cameras, 10 megapixel on the S22, 11 megapixel on the Pixel 6 Pro. They're both pretty good. They both take pretty good front facing selfies. You know, you'll be snapping off the selfies and you'll be pretty happy with them. Send them off to whoever you want to. I don't really see there's too many issues there. They're fairly comparative. I still think for photography, Pixel 6 Pro takes the cake on the front and rear cameras. One area where the Pixel 6 Pro sucks balls and that is no face recognition. That should be there. Shouldn't be any problems, it should just be there. It's there on the S22, 
as with the fingerprint scanner. And I do think from my experience, the S22 and Pixel 6 Pro for fingerprint scanning are equal. I don't see that one's worse than the other. That's my experience. I've been using them both hardcore and I'd have to say that they're equal when it comes to the fingerprint scanner. I don't know what other YouTubers were really complaining about with the Pixel 6 Pro's fingerprint sensor. It's just not that bad. I think all of the in-display ones are pretty shit, but uh, these ones aren't particularly worse or better than any others. So I don't know what all the fuss was about there, but definitely you need facial recognition and the Pixel 6 Pro at this stage doesn't have it. Another thing that's interesting is the battery life here. Pixel 6 Pro, 5,000 milliamp hour battery life, gets me through to about a, a day of heavy use, I can get about 10 hours out of it. That's not screen on time, that's just 10 hours before the battery anxiety kicks in and I need to start charging it so I can just enjoy the rest of the night. With the Galaxy S22, I'm getting five hours out of it before the battery anxiety kicks in and I have to charge it. Now I'm not talking about running down to zero here, I'm talking about battery anxiety. And that's when you go, holy shit, I'm not gonna make it through the whole day, I need to charge my phone. When that kicks in, it's a lot sooner on the Galaxy S22 because you have 3,700 milliamp hour there versus 5,000 milliamp hour on the Pixel 6 Pro. Another area where the Pixel 6 Pro is killing it over the Galaxy S22. Their fast charging is a little bit on the garbage side. You've got 30 watt fast charging in the uh, Pixel 6 Pro and 25 on the S22. I think when you've got phones like Oppo offering like 65 watt, 85 watt, like just amazing charging speeds, then there's no reason why we shouldn't get it in this price point with these flagships as well. Now on Geekbench and Antutu and GFX, S22 is miles ahead, but we all know that they've been bullshitting their way through that. When it comes to benchmarks, the S22 is well ahead of the Pixel 6 Pro, but when it comes to day-to-day -day performance and actual using the devices, the Pixel 6 Pro is a much smoother experience, much faster experience, less lag and no throttling that we're aware of, whereas the S22 has all of that stuff in spades, and I would say is a country mile behind the Pixel 6 Pro. So I am going back to the Pixel 6 Pro. I am converted Pixel fanboy. I just can't see myself going back to Samsung now. Once bitten, twice shy. I do appreciate their hardware. They've lost a plot when it comes to their software. They should be trimming it down, they should be making it better. Instead, they've made it worse. I don't know what's going on with that Snapdragon and this software and, oh my God, it's just horrible. Just horrible. So much so that I was just so relieved to get the Pixel 6 Pro back on deck. It's my daily driver. I'm loving it. It's gonna be hard for another phone to knock this off its perch. And they're the same price. That's what blows me away is that they're the same price. They definitely don't act like the same phone. And I love that I would even put this up against like the S21 Ultra. That's how good it is. But that S21 Ultra is $600 more here in Australia. So I think Pixel are really on a winner here with these phones. I think anyone could do themselves a favor if you're choosing between Samsung and Google. Pick the Google, you got nothing to lose. But if you pick the Samsung phones, there's a good chance you're gonna be disappointed. This is my opinion, this is my comparison. I hope I help you out in choosing a better phone for your day-to-day -day living. Thank you for watching my video, and I will catch you in the next one. Check ya.